Hi, fellow Mike Tyson, fellow disappointed Mike Tyson fans. Um, if you don't know me, if you haven't seen my channel before, I'm Courtney Jensen. I, I'm, a, I'm a tenured muscle physiology professor, and I occasionally talk about Mike Tyson in a lot of contexts. And this context, this occasion and context, I'm going to talk about why Mike Tyson lost to Jake Paul. He had no business losing to Jake Paul, and like, how did that possibly happen? I'll explain that from the perspective of muscle physiology. Um, I've talked about this before. I gave a graduate lecture months ago. You can find that on YouTube. I'll post a link to it in a comment in the uh, video description too. Uh, because it had nothing to do with strategy or planning or, uh, I mean, what his, his technique in the, in the ring, the, the understanding of what's in you know, the box. Like, none of, Mike Tyson is the best there ever. I just don't think history has an equal of Mike Tyson in, in the mental game of boxing. Let me show you a quick video of Mike Tyson himself talking about this. Yeah, okay, so just... Yeah, okay, so you're, you're what, 5'7", um, right? 5'7", I'm 6'2", it's the cameras. So, then you have to bend your legs. Yeah, 5'5", bend my legs, yeah. okay. And I'm a much taller guy. Right, now. You. I'm more adjusted to throwing my punch like this. I just, ah, and then I have right. to, if you're calm and so relaxed you enough, adjust. if you're calm and relaxed enough, you can watch and you can see everything. And uh -huh. you can watch every twitch of his muscle. But you have to have the confidence and the relaxation. Where? Where do you direct your vision? Do you look the guy in the eye? Yeah, do you I try to keep right the here. whole form? Right because his face can't hit me. So I only watch me. I want to show you. Right. So it's not strategy, right, that determined the outcome of this event. I mean, Tyson has always been a master of strategy, every bit as much today as he was back then. The only determinant is age, and this applies to any sport. I mean, just like baseball. Okay, like if Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds were to return to baseball now, like at the age of 60, I mean, they wouldn't hit any home runs. And I mean, the same is true with Tyson and Box. I think age really is the story here, not just Tyson versus Paul. But I think age is the major factor that just like the overwhelming crowd support for Mike Tyson here was age. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone above the age of 40 was rooting like really hard for Tyson. Like I, I'm 44 and I've never rooted harder for anyone in a contest of anything. And like some of that, some of my rooting is just my nearly lifelong appreciation for him, for Tyson. Or at least since like Mike Tyson's punch out, since that came out on the, on the NES. Um, I was about seven, and I think lots of supporters uh, carry a similar lifefish long admiration. But why do we root so hard for Tyson in, in this fight? Way harder, you know, than anyone rooted for him against Roy Jones Jr. a few years back. And I think the reason, you know, I'm not sure, but I think the reason is we want to believe our own advancing age hasn't handicapped us. Uh, we were rooting for Tyson every bit as much as we were rooting for ourselves here. Uh, and let me show you another video clip um, where uh, people reveal their aversion to the age hypothesis. Man. Well, speaking of Mike Tyson, this, these people that think that he don't stand a chance against Jake Paul, that like this shouldn't even, like he, cause he's too old. I was like, I think you're, I think you're crazy. Well, they're definitely uninformed. Okay, so people are uninformed. We're all uninformed, right? That's the claim here. So uh, let's inform ourselves, right? Let's evaluate the information and let's start with telomere. Telomere attrition. Uh, let's talk about this. This is a major part of senescence, uh, the deterioration we all experience with age. Uh, and so what telomeres are is at the end of a chromosome, uh, you know, at the end of a shoelace, there's an aglet, that little plastic cap. That's basically what telomeres are at the ends of, of chromosomes. And they just stabilize and protect in the same way that the aglets stabilize and protect shoelaces, right? We have, we have telomeres for this in, in, in chromosomes. And it's just TTAGGG, 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 over and over and over. This repeats. And then each cell cycle cuts that aglet you know, a little bit shorter, maybe 50 or 60, 150, 160. Telomere attrition isn't standardized across all cells uh, and across all people. Lots of things are going to accelerate uh, telomere attrition, like hostility. Um, so if you think of hostility, like Mike Tyson 
this characterized a lot of it, and you know, maybe not lately, but the early years of Mike Tyson, definitely characterized by this trauma. You know, not too many people can claim trauma equivalent uh, to, to that experience on Mike Tyson. Alcohol abuse, this hastens telomere attrition, cocaine use. Uh, these are both, Mike Tyson has this in his history. Uh, being the recipient of racial discrimination, plenty of research here. Uh, having good relationships, great for telomeres, bad relationships, bad for telomeres. Um, educational attainment seems to matter more than socioeconomic, current socioeconomic uh, standing. The, the educational attainment uh, has, a, has an influence. But the point is, Mike Tyson is not 58 years old uh, in the way that his audience members are 58. Like senescence doesn't care how many times the earth has circled the sun. And the deterioration that comes with that can't be escaped. We can deny it on podcasts, but that's not being informed or informing. That's just wishful thinking uh, and wishful podcasting. And so what comes with this though? What comes with telomere attrition and senescence and the deterioration that we're experiencing in skeletal muscle and boxing performance? What can we expect? Well, muscle mass is definitely going to decrease uh, after the age of 30, maybe three to 8% per decade, something like that. Uh, it's more pronounced and muscle loss is more pronounced in males than females. It's a bit more pronounced in black males than in white males. And a lot of this loss is going to be coming from type two fibers. These are the faster, stronger, more explosive, critical to boxing fibers. Uh, and then Mike Tyson's history with alcohol also affects this because mTOR, you know, mammalian or mechanistic target of rapamycin, this is the major signaling cascade for muscle you know, hypertrophy, for repair and remodeling. And this is inhibited by alcohol. Uh, and then beyond the muscle cells themselves, there's a progressive loss of motor neurons. Uh, as people age. These are the nerves that activate the muscle cells. Uh, and when this happens, the motor units, that, that means uh, the neuron and every single fiber that it innervates, these motor, the individual motor units, they might get a little bit bigger uh, because some of the surviving neurons will pick up stray fibers. Uh, the muscle cells whose parent nerve died, right? So they're sort of abandoned. Um, but so you'll have fewer total muscle fibers. That's going to lead to a loss of force production. Uh, and you'll have fewer motor neurons. Uh, and there will probably be more fibers in at least many of them. And so that's going to lead to a loss of force control. Um, and then beyond that, the function of skeletal muscle changes. You know, the twitch time, the calcium pumping capacity. Uh, muscle contraction is dependent on calcium. There are metabolic changes uh, in the skeletal muscle. The enzymes responsible for oxidative and glycolytic metabolism. There's some abundance here is lost. Mitochondrial volume, that diminishes. Um, ATP stores, the amount of ATP we store in the muscle, that also uh, begins to, to go down to be depleted. Uh, and then there's GABA, right? Gamma aminobutyric acid. Uh, our control of GABA in your central nervous system, you have inhibitory networks that allow you to abort motor decisions once they've been initiated. Uh, and so this is essential in combat sports. Uh, the way it's always described in the literature is like you're going to cross a street and you step out and you've committed to crossing the street and then like you look you know in the direction of and you see a car race and so you back up and you, or just think about it like you're about to step on poop you're walking down the sidewalk and there's a pile of poop and you're gonna step on it you you like you know your step you, you leap or whatever you abort that gate uh, and the same thing is gonna happen in combat sports uh, you might begin to commit an action um, and then you realize it's a bad decision. You know, that the punch won't contact, it's gonna leave you vulnerable, exposed, whatever. And so you abort that decision using GABA, right? Gamma aminobutyric acid. And so this is called reactive inhibition and it deteriorates with age. And so our decisions, we're, we're unable to control our decisions. It doesn't matter. Mike Tyson may be the best planner in the universe, the best strategist there ever was, um, at least among people who punch and be punched for a profession, but age makes this a little bit irrelevant. Um, and then aside from age, there's some other variables like contact adaptation. Uh, not the kind of like, I've been hit so many times that I'm having trouble, um, uh, you know, keeping my consciousness, not that kind of contact adaptation, um, which Joe Rogan has talked about. Let me show you a clip of, of this now. People know you don't lose that much ability. You know, 
you have to understand who you're talking about. But it, what what does change though is your your ability to recover. Yes. Right, and then your, the amount of damage you can take. Yes. That's that's what changes. But he can still fucking destroy that guy. The thing about the amount of damage you can take, it's all that's also um, that, that's all it's, it's it's all in comparison to how much damage you took in your life. Right, there's certain guys that as they get older, it's very disturbing because you see them get touched with a punch and they just go out. Okay, so it's not that. I mean, that's a phenomenon, that's a totally different phenomenon that we could talk about where we're getting outside of muscle physiology. Within muscle physiology, the type of contact adaptation I'm talking about is really a matter of specificity of adaptation, where there's a remodeling of the tissue uh, that takes place. The probably a lot of that in the extracellular matrix, maybe not the muscle cells themselves, but it's in response to repeated blunt trauma. Uh, every cell, all of our tissues are gonna adapt to the specific loads and stresses that they experience. So if, if, you're, if you're load, if your experience is being punched a lot, that's a signal for adaptation and your body adapts to better withstand uh, those punches. And at least recently, you know, in the last 20 years, Mike Tyson has not had the same stimulus for contact adaptation that Jake Paul. You know, Jake Paul, maybe he's averaging a few professional fights a year. There's a lot of contact adaptation happening. And Mike Tyson isn't probably isn't experiencing the same thing in training. And so Mike Tyson has even talked about this himself uh, as he was getting ready for the Peter Mc Neely fight. He talked about contact adaptation in different uh, terms. But the point is, there's a number of explanations um, for the reason Mike Tyson lost that has nothing to do with his legacy. It really is senescence. It's age. It applies to all of us. It's terrifying, but we should still be honest in confronting it. Uh, and we shouldn't boast when youth wins because youth gets old too. That's the course of life. It's terrible, and we should try to make peace with it as opposed to denying it on podcasts. Uh, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed the fight um, and that maybe you won money on it, even though uh, everyone's chosen champion didn't prevail. But we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.